I often talk to people about what it's like to live in the world's most digital nation. Denmark ranks consistently number one in the UN e-governance survey and in all the other rankings out there, it's always number one, two, or three. I can't get into all the details about what it's like to live in such a digitalized nation, so let's stick to what I know urbanism. There are a lot of really cool things that you have access to in such a digitalized data world like this one that we inhabit here. So let me give you an idea of what it's like just a regular citizen like me having access to the data that the city of Copenhagen has on offer. First of all, you have a really great resource. It's called the Copenhagen Map. Lots of different categories, garbage recycling, business areas and permits. Let's check out urban planning. For example, a map of the city, and I don't know, let's just check this out. We got lots of different parameters that we can look at. So let's have a look at infrastructure projects. You can see what infrastructure projects are in the works around the city. You can click on them and find further details. Always a lot of urban renewal projects on the go in Copenhagen. So this is what's going on, different categories. You zoom in like that, you click on one. So let's go down to traffic and roads. So let's randomly pick winter maintenance of bicycle infrastructure. A map comes up with all the on-street bicycle lanes and bicycle paths that will be prioritized for winter maintenance, basically in the entire network. And this is one of the ones I love the most, traffic counts for bikes. Look at all of those circles. Copenhagen has been doing comprehensive traffic counts since the early 1970s. I think there's over 200 spots where they do counts. You zoom in anywhere you like, see lots of different sizes of circles there. I don't know, let's just pick one here. So it tells you the location where the traffic counters were sitting, a total number of bikes in that period from seven in the morning to seven at night. And this being Copenhagen, they do a cargo bike count as well. Annual average daily traffic, as well as the average weekday daily traffic, always around or above 20,000 bikes at this location. And then you can click on the PDF link and a very detailed data set shows up. Then you fly around and have a look at some other places if you like, and between 25 and 30,000 bikes a day, just on that one bridge across the harbor. There are traffic counts for bikes, pedestrians, for intersections, for cars. So let's have a look at pedestrians. Over 25,000 pedestrians on that spot. Then you hop over into the environment. This is a map of the homes in Copenhagen that have high levels of noise pollution. The blue color is actually the worst. Then we can check out air pollution in Copenhagen. But of course, it's all the main highways left over from the 1950s, 60s, 70s that are causing the most pollution. Garbage and recycling, just to really be nerdy here. This is just a list of every garbage can, every recycling center, sorting points where you, you know, sort your garbage into different categories everything right there. It's it's off the charts in this city. Generally, I like to think that a city that gathers that much data is really taking their job seriously and giving open access to us, the citizens, really empowers us as well. The level of conversation is really advanced when we all have access to the same information if we're going to try and work towards making our city better 